China, a Marxist-Leninist state, believes war with the U.S. is inevitable. But is there a way to beat them at their own game? Welcome to China Uncensored. I'm Chris Chappell. Is war with China inevitable? According to the United States' most senior military officer, Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Army General Mark Milley, China believes, yes, war with the U.S. is inevitable. And Milley places the blame squarely on Marxist ideology. Here he is in a recent interview with the government executive media group. At least their military, and perhaps others, have come to some sort of conclusion that war with the United States is inevitable. I think that's a very dangerous thing, but they come out of a Marxist ideology, uh, Marxist uh, thought processes, and in Marxism, uh, they believe in historical determinism, they believe in a linear uh, approach to history. And in particular, the war could be over Taiwan. Let me ask you this, sir. Do you agree with, with those who are saying the United States needs to significantly increase the speed in which it's getting yeah, so to Taiwan? I do, because I think that, you know, President Xi, uh, uh, the head of the Chinese Communist Party. Uh, he gave uh, several speeches, uh, bo both recently and in the last couple of years. Uh, and he set a date uh, of 2027, where he said explicitly in open press uh, for the Chinese uh, People's Liberation Military, the Army, Navy, and Air Force, uh, to be ready to have the capability uh, to attack and seize the island of Taiwan by force. So I couldn't find exactly what General Milley said. I never saw Xi Jinping make a public statement about the military being ready to have the capability to invade Taiwan by 2027. In February, the head of the CIA said U.S. intelligence said he said that, but I've never heard Xi Jinping put a specific year to it. However, he has absolutely publicly said he's willing to use force to take Taiwan. And over the years, we've seen a rapid increase in military aggression against Taiwan with Chinese warplanes entering Taiwan's air defense identification zone on a regular basis. In fact, during a recent trip to the U.S. by Taiwan's President Tsai Ing-wen, China sent a swath of military vehicles near Taiwan. And the reason President Tsai was in the U.S. is because she was transiting to Belize and Guatemala, two of the very few countries left in the world that still recognize Taiwan diplomatically. The Chinese Communist Party has been using a variety of pressure tactics to get countries around the world to break ties with Taiwan. Most recently, at the end of March, Honduras kicked Taiwan out in favor of the People's Republic of China. On her way back to the U.S., President Tsai also met with U.S. Speaker of the House Kevin McCarthy. Of course, Beijing said it would fight back if that meeting happened, which, as always, the threat was all talk. But a war over Taiwan is a very real possibility. Experts say a Chinese invasion of Taiwan would be a bloody logistical nightmare, one the U.S. might not be guaranteed to win. So why is Taiwan so important? I'll tell you more after the break. Welcome back. If you want to support this show, consider buying one of these amazing West Taiwan travel posters from our merch store over at ChinaUncensored.tv slash merchandise. Taiwan has become the center of focus for both the U.S. and China. Both sides see Taiwan as critically important to its national interests and might be willing to shed blood to ensure it. So why is Taiwan so important? For the Chinese Communist Party, it's pretty clear. At the end of the Chinese Civil War in 1949, Mao Zedong's communist guerrilla forces seized control of mainland China. The former government, the Republic of China, fled to Taiwan as their main base of operations. And even though China has tried to invade in the past, the stalemate has continued to this day. If Xi Jinping were to orchestrate the conquest of Taiwan, he would have achieved something even Mao Zedong couldn't do. But the U.S. also has tremendous interests in Taiwan. There are basically four big reasons. The first is Taiwan's strategic location. It's part of what's called the first island chain. It's this wall of islands from Japan to Taiwan to the Philippines. The U.S. has many strategic military bases on the first island chain. Essentially, this prevents China's military from projecting power out into the Pacific. 
But if the Communist Party takes Taiwan, they can send their military unobstructed out into the Pacific, as well as solidify their control of the South and East China Seas. Another reason Taiwan is so important is because it has 23 million people living there. Taiwan is a thriving democracy. The greatest repudiation of the Communist Party's claims that Chinese people can't handle democracy. If the Communist Party took over, it would become a wasteland. One Communist Party official has suggested the party needs to re-educate Taiwanese after they take over Taiwan. Not a comforting statement from a country that has re-education camps where they torture and kill people. Which brings me to the third biggest reason Taiwan is important for the U.S. If the U.S. fails to defend Taiwan's democracy from falling to China's authoritarian regime, the U.S. would no longer be a superpower, and China's iron grip on Asia would be unbreakable. According to Australian journalist Michael Shoebridge, if Beijing were to invade Taiwan successfully, U.S. inaction would profoundly undercut U.S. power and show that America and its allies and partners, including Australia, cannot act together to secure important common interests in the face of CCP action. As author Grant Newsham said on our podcast recently, Asia would turn red almost overnight. And finally, a successful Chinese invasion of Taiwan puts China in a prime position to threaten the United States directly. According to the Center for Strategic Studies, trillions of dollars in shipping goes through the South China Sea. China would be able to effectively sanction the U.S. if it wanted, by blocking off shipping. On top of that, Taiwan builds most of the world's advanced semiconductors. An invasion would completely disrupt that supply chain. Remember how bad things were when supply chains were screwed up by COVID? Well, that was when everyone was actively trying to fix it. This would be so much worse. America's technological advantage, including all of the high-tech supplies the U.S. military depends on, would collapse. But since the Chinese Communist Party wants Taiwan so badly, and the United States has to stop them, does that mean war is inevitable? Not necessarily. According to General Milley, even though China considers war inevitable, that doesn't mean it has to be so. I don't believe war is inevitable. I don't think it's imminent. Um, but I do think that we need to be very, very pragmatic and cautious going forward, and we will reduce the likelihood of war if we remain really, really strong uh, relative to China, and China knows that we have the will to use it uh, if necessary. So the Communist Party knows that to get Taiwan, it has to convince the people of the United States that Taiwan isn't important. It isn't worth spilling blood over. And if the Chinese regime can trick Americans into believing the U.S. should abandon Taiwan, then blood will be spilled. So now you know why Taiwan is so important. And if you hear someone saying otherwise, you know what to tell them. And this show would not exist without support from viewers like you. YouTube frequently demonetizes, suppresses, and secretly unsubscribes people from this channel. China Uncensored would be out of business if it weren't for what I call the China Uncensored 50 Cent Army, fans who support our work. You can support us, too, for a small monthly contribution on our exclusive social media site on Locals. That's chinauncensored.locals.com. But as a thank you to the China Uncensored 50 Cent Army, I answer their questions at the end of each episode. And today's question comes from Nick Allen 1. Since the Restrict Act gives the federal government the power to outlaw VPNs and any website or app they don't like, and since FOIA requests don't apply to Restrict Act mandates, do you think the U.S. government will outlaw locals, rumbles, substack, and other sites that circumvent government influence sites like Facebook, Instagram, etc.? How can the Supreme Court not strike this down as unconstitutional? How did the Twitter files fit into all of this? An excellent question, Nick. We actually covered the Restrict Act in depth on our other channel, America Uncovered. I'll leave a pinned comment with the link. But here's the short of it. First, the good. TikTok itself is not the problem. The problem is the Chinese Communist Party using American freedoms to undermine American freedoms. If you just ban TikTok, the Communist Party may just roll out with something else. So you need legislation that gets to the root of that problem. 
That's what the Restrict Act tries to do. However, the language in the bill is way too vague and provides a major loophole that would allow the government to be completely untransparent about how it enforces the law. And as we know from the Patriot Act, the government does like to overreach. The good news is the bill hasn't even gone to committee for review yet. So there's still plenty of time to change the language of the bill and fix all the problems with it, especially if you call your local Congress people, both the House and Senate, and tell them what you think. But again, I recommend checking out the full episode we did on it. Thanks for your question and your support, Nick. Thank you for watching. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.